Good morning. So, um, we have been talking about the history of Hindi films and uh, today I will be talking about mythological films especially in uh, Indian cinema as well as Hindi films. Okay. So, some of the mythologicals as you know were also made in Marathi, the early ones I am talking about. So, it is uh, against this backdrop that we are going to talk about um, the history and evolution of mythological films in India. Now, uh, Hollywood has uh, been making these great period pieces, costume dramas and mythological films for uh, a long time. So, you as uh, uh, late as uh, very recently, um, you have had uh, Russell Crowe playing Noah. Okay, so, uh, that is a biblical picture. Now, uh, earlier also you are familiar with the great uh, mythological films who, which are also religious epics such as Ten Commandments, Sign of the Cross and Ban Her. So, um, what I am trying to say here is that uh, mythologicals have been a very established genre in Hollywood as well as in India. Interestingly, while we when we talk about the sign of the cross and when we talk about Banhar and uh, Ten Commandments and also uh, Russell Crowe's doing Russell Crowe doing Noah. So, um, you may note that these are extremely big budget films, big directors and also mega stars. The major point of difference between mythologicals in Hollywood and mythologicals in India is this that in India we do not have this culture even today. So, uh, the culture I am talking about is big stars, big budgets and big produ producers or studios or big directors backing up a mythological film. Mythologicals as a genre and it is a genre, it always had the tag of a B picture. B picture is such something that is not the A list movie. See in cinema we talk about the A list films which star the top actors, they are directed by top directors and are uh, lavishly mounted. So, that is an A picture for us. B picture is uh, and there is another difference A picture is supposedly uh, made to cater to an elitist, educated, uh, more urban kind of an audience also NRIs. That is not the case with B pictures. It is a very uh, complex category of films. Even in Hollywood we have big pictures, uh, B pictures, but uh, their B is very different from what we consider as B pictures. Okay, we also have the genre of cult cinema, but then also there is a huge difference between what they consider cult and what we consider cult. Uh, at this point I would like you to draw your attention to the very first mythological film from India which is also our first ever movie, Raja Harish Chandra. Please note the link. Mythological films play a tension between myth and realism. As we all know that realism is something true to life and myth is something uh, which is uh, talked about which is uh, um, which may, no, may or may not be accurate historically accurate. That is the difference between myth and realism and mythologicals have to tread a thin line between the two constructs. Mythological films along with devotional films and historical films do not just show literal representations of religions, communities and beliefs, but are also grounded in wider customs and concerns of society okay. and these concerns are religious. Mythologicals attempt 
to transform the myth on screen with the use of images, icons and symbols and special effects and thus they make it easy for cinema to be mobilized by myths. Some of the most successful films, uh, all time successful films in Hindi are uh, and I am talking about mythological. So, Sampoon uh, Ramayana, which was a, a 60s film, but even earlier we had films such as uh, Bhakta Prahlad and Kichak Vadham. We also have Shiv Mahima, Love Kush, Bharat Milap, and Mahabharata. So, I am not talking about the TV show, I am not talking about B. R. Chopra's Mahabharata, I am talking about the film Mahabharata. And there have been several versions of Ramayana. You might uh, know, uh, it may be uh, perhaps you know very instructive to un understand that uh, um, Shobhna Samrat, uh, Nutan's mother, was uh, extremely adept and was well known at playing mythological characters and she reprised the role of Sita in a number of films based on Ramayana. So, Ra Ramayana has been made and remade several times. Of course, considering the importance that the epic holds in our culture, it is not surprising. While myths may be regarded as abstract ideas in India, they held a very real existence. There was a clear distinction between uh, uh, made between material and real. The question of a purely material existence behind the form is unimportant, because in traditional Indian art as opposed to the academic and scientifically aware post Renaissance Europe, the form is seen in the mind not in reality. This is something we have to understand. I am quoting uh, the critic Chidanand Das Gupta, where he says, in India mythology often borders around history, social history at any rate, hence the renewed material consciousness of today can find inspiration in mythological tales. Therefore, myths and mythological films play an important role in Indian political project, which tries to present itself as ancient civilization rich in culture. So, it is not just a social cultural construct, it also has its roots uh, in shaping or it, it also has a very strong role in shaping the politics of our times. The role of myth is almost a counter to the foreign western education. In India, the mythological cinema genre saw the coming together multiple forms of art uh, such as painting, storytelling, theater, folk tale and dramas in order to uh, narrate a film. So, all these arts came together to construct a story. Uh, as we have been talking about, uh, the first ever film was Raja Harishchandra, released in 1913, directed by Dada Sahib Phalke. Now, India's struggles, uh, initial struggles for uh, filmmakers included the inability to get women to act in their films. So, there were times when the uh, filmmakers were forced to cast effeminate men to play the parts of women. There was the need to import expensive machinery from abroad, which would often delay films. So, we are talking about the struggles that early filmmakers put up with, especially while making mythologies, uh, mythologicals and many films made during the earlier period were mythologicals. Uh, following that period, most films that came out uh, uh, in the early 20s and uh, during the inception years of cinema were mythologicals, because one important reason they were commercially very successful, because of their universal appeal. Part of the appeal of mythological films to Indian cinema's early audience was that unlike before where gods and goddesses and their uh, acts were performed in their mind, cinema now gave life to the imagination. This imagination gave, took shape and form okay, and that became crystallized. So, for the first time, you know, uh, audiences could see gods flying across spaces, performing magic on a screen, punished evil, rewarded good, etcetera and that also set the template for good versus evil theme of our films, which remained uh, constant for a very long time to come. 
Another reason that can explain the success of mythological films way into the post independence era is that while mainstream films are associated uh, with the tasteless and uh, entertainment, mythological films provide an escape and space where uh, the focus is shifted to deeds performed by gods and not the actors themselves and it were it uh, uh, would be very interesting to note that many actors became familiar to the audience and in the audience's mind um, as gods themselves. You may recall that when um, Ramanand Sagar's Ramayana was shot and was screened during the late 80s, many of the stars were actually taken as incarnation of uh, um, the gods themselves. So, such is uh, the importance of these epics and the mythologicals. So, they are not to be taken very lightly, although as I said very curiously, very peculiarly, no one has ever attempted a very lavish or very extravagant kind of a mythological on Indian screen till date, especially not in Hindi films. Uh, it is uh, there is also uh, another reason for the universal appeal of mythologicals and which is that uh, these are usually considered as family films that can be watched by entire family including uh, women and children. Now, as opposed to traditional folk theatre, the illusion came to life far more vividly than they did on stage. Even for the urban audience, seeing gods on a screen was a vehicle for subtly influencing their belief in the gods themselves, something that was that is actually unimaginable in the West. It is said that people even called Prem Adib, who played uh, Ram in Harish Chandra, was called by many to his home and worshipped with flowers. During the 19th century, Puranas and Ramayana and Mahabharat became foundational to new theatre tradition in India, which then went on to influence regional films. Surabhi Theatre Group in Andhra Pradesh, which successfully imbibed Harikatha tradition and Marathi Sangeet Natak and Parsi Theatre that were critical in producing many artists and writers are some examples of theatre groups that impacted local cinema. The very need for an additional dimension to the communicative arts can be traced back to the industrial revolution, modern technology, urbanization, high mobility and rapid communication introduced a whole new set of sights, sounds, symbols and their material interrelationships which demanded interpretation. But far from inducing a modern, skeptical, secular spirit, the mythological genre gave access for the Hindu pantheon to this powerful instrument of belief. Part of the political success attributed to regional leaders uh, in our country is also attributed to the characters they played in some of these mythological and they became uh, larger than life in the popular imagination. Cinema was thus used as a tool to induce their divinity. And also it is interesting to note that states that achieved high literacy rates and went through Marxist political structure and eras have significantly less devotional mythological films uh, and this is important to note. Some scholars have also noticed that the films, these mythological films might have veiled political connotations that under the strict censorship of British authorities, ancient stories of demon slaying heroes could serve as allegorical critiques of the colonial Raj. This is supported by even da Dada Sahab Falke in 1919 in his uh, Serendari about the dishonor of Draupadi, it is uh, said to be an allegorical representation of or critique of Viceroy Lord Curzon. So, such narrative familiarity was relied on whenever a new technology was introduced, which explains the brief resurgence of mythologicals in the early sound era. This argument may be further expanded uh, to television viewing in the 1980s, which received a boost from phenomenally popular uh, real, uh, 
serialized versions of Ram and the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. These are the most successful examples of um, you know, television series ever on Indian screen. Now, uh, there is another, uh, the, the mythologicals have been more or less quite successful in India, especially in uh, uh, talking about Hindi films in the smaller towns and in rural areas. But there is one exception where which attained a pan India Indian success to a very uh, you know fantastic degree and this film is called Jai Santoshima. This was a surprise, a surprise hit of the 70s. The mega success of Jai Santoshima is all the more interesting because it came at the same time as Shole and Divar, films that had high gloss, big budgets and plenty of action. These films also star uh, the great superstar Amitabh Bachchan and the fact that Jai Santoshima became such a big blockbuster when Shole and Divar were running is astonishing in itself. Now, we know that religious films um, are considered as B films and this fact was established very clearly by the late 50s. None of the big actors wanted to act in religious films. Apart from the early silent films, there were hardly any mythologicals that were directed by top directors or starred big stars. Now, many of these films relied on special effects such as thunder, lightning and hurtling, hurling tridents. Now, Jai Santoshima's plot is based on the clash of deities. It had a chart busting music and is sung on religious occasions even today. Uh, it is interesting to note that uh, uh, the goddess, the titular goddess herself was not a very well known goddess till the movie came into being. Okay. And there is also a very interesting subplot of a clash of the deities and family drama. So, two major elements happening in Jai Santoshima, a woman losing the love of her husband, uh, she is oppressed and uh, harassed by her in-laws and then uh, she, uh, she is a devout, a staunch devotee of, uh, Jai, uh, of uh, Santoshi Mata. This, uh, leads to jealousy of other major goddesses. A very interesting plot, although the production values are not that high, but still the film remains a classic. Here is a sequence from the film, please watch it and then we will continue. Although films that are directly mythologicals may have re reduced, the influence of myths and mythologicals have persisted even during post-liberalization modernized India. These films produce convenient archetypes for characters and play into existing social role models. Characters like Sita, Draupadi, um, Arjun, they play into convenient patriarchal structures of how, um, you know, uh, people should behave or characters should behave on a screen. So, many of our screen characters are uh, somehow archetypal representatives of the mythological characters, although we may not be watching mythologicals per se. So, this may account that we uh, for the fact that we may not be making mythologicals, but our characters are archetypes of the mythological characters. So, this may account for the fact that why we do not make mythologicals on a big scale. I mean you think of a movie like Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam and it has all the tropes of an idealized family which harks back to our epics. Now, similarly characters such as uh, uh, Lord Krishna as the righteous uh, uh, character and Lakshmana as the loyal brother and Ravana as the epitome of evil and desire all these characters they produce fodder for script writers. Myths also have their share of grey characters such as Karna and Karna is again an extremely popular character and he has, the character has been given different dimensions by our screenwriters on screen. Again think of movies such as Mani Ratnam's Dalapati 
and uh, Prakash Jha's Rajneeti and both these films blockbusters they have heavily borrowed from the Mahabharata. So, myths and ec epics and mythologicals exist around us all the time. Mythologicals as we know are still a very popular genre in Indian television and uh, germane to mythologicals we also have another subcategory that is devotional films based on the lives of Hindu saints. Now, Sant Tukaram was one of the premier films made in 1936. Tukaram was a 17th century poet, saint and singer who is popular in Maharashtra. Uh, so, this Marathi film received the award for the best film at the Venice Film Festival in 1937. The directors Vishnu Pan Damle and Sheikh Fatehlal made two more similar films, Sant Gyaneshwar and Gopala Krishna. In uh, the 1939 Sant Tulsi Das was another noteworthy film based on the life of the 16th century poet saint. Shirdi Ke Sai Baba is a super hit 1977 film starring big stars such as Manoj Kumar, Rajendra Kumar and Hema Malini. But these devotional mythological films are still popular particularly in regional films and also on television. So, uh, this is one very important uh, genre that exists in our cinema that needs definitely needs more attention and exploration. Thank you very much. We will meet for our next class.